the M1 Abrams was one of the first plastic kits released for Team Yankee. This is the M1 Abrams tank platoon box set which contains five 15mm plastic M1 Abrams tanks. The box contains five plastic M1 Abrams tanks, five tank commander figures, one decal sheet and three Team Yankee unit cards. The back of the box shows the exploded assembly diagram for the kit. It also depicts one of the completed tanks painted in MERDC winter verdant scheme of forest green, field drab, sand and black. The assembly diagram here shows this is a fairly simple kit, which will build up quickly. Options for open and closed hatches are shown here. What isn't shown is that the kit can be built as the early 105mm armed M1, or the later 120mm armed M1A1 version. Let's look inside the box. This is the decal sheet. The white chevrons are formation signs and while there's a lot of conflicting information online, I've gone with the view that these indicate which company the vehicle belongs to. Up is Alpha Company, right is Bravo Company, down is Charlie, and left facing indicates Delta Company. These are in white and the decal sheet seems a bit yellowed. Exposing the decal sheet to UV from the sun can sometimes reverse this. The tank tactical numbers indicate the platoon and vehicle number respectively. So first platoon tracks would be marked as 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 and 1-4 respectively. 5-5 five, five, and 6-6 six, six are the company 2IC and command tracks. These markings match the number system used in the Team Yankee novel. Next up are the five commander figures. These aren't plastic. Battlefront have said they're not happy with figures in plastic. These are cast in resin so they'll need to be glued with superglue rather than plastic cement. The kit also contains three unit cards for the Team Yankee system. The first card is for the Armoured Combat Team HQ section and has vehicle unit stats on one side and the unit formation and special rules on the other. Next is the M1 Abrams Tank Platoon card, again with unit and vehicle stats on the front and special rules on the back. Lastly is the formation card for the 25th Armoured Division, which shows combat and support unit choices and unit special rules on the back. Let's move on to the plastic. Each tank comes with two sprues moulded in medium grey plastic. This first sprue has the upper hull, upper and lower turret pieces, side skirts and turret stowage racks. The shorter racks are for the M1, while the longer ones are for the M1A1. Note that the turret has a space to glue in the ammunition blow-off panels. These changed between the M1 and M1A1, and this difference is reflected in the kit. The second sprue has the lower hull, tracks, MGs and the two gun barrels. The top gun here is the M68 105mm rifled gun for the M1. This is a derivative of the excellent and widely used British L7. Below that with the larger bore evacuator is the M256 smoothbore gun used on the M1A1 and later Abrams variants. This was developed from the German Rheinmetall 120mm gun used on the Leopard 2. Battlefront have included two each of the Commander's 50 caliber MGs and 7.62mm loaders MGs on the sprue. This is a thoughtful gesture that means you have a spare if you break these delicate parts getting them off the sprue. My spares box thanks you. As you can see, detail on these castings is crisp and sharp. This is an inbox review, so I'll not be doing any step-by-step -step build of the kit here. Battlefront have a great assembly guide on their website, so you can reference this during construction. The URL is on screen now and will be included in the description as well. Here is the completed kit. This is an M1A1 Abrams with the later blow-off panels, cut-down side skirts and 120mm gun. As you can see, this builds into a beautiful 15mm tank. My only beefs are a couple of obvious ejector pin marks on the smoke grenade boxes and the cut-down side skirt pieces. Annoyingly, these are in prominent places and will need to be filled or sanded down if you build the M1A1 variant. The M1 Abrams was developed in the late 1970s to replace the aging M60 tank. The M1 project followed the cancellation of the ambitious but complex MBT-70 German-American joint project. The MBT-70 attempted to introduce advanced systems like a hydro-pneumatic suspension and a gun missile system but proved unworkable and was cancelled. Although the M1 was less ambitious than the MBT-70 program, it did introduce next generation features like gas turbine engines and advanced composite armour. This is the original M1 prototype on display at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland. 
I'm old enough to remember the M1 being introduced into service in the 1980s. This is one of the initial M1s taking part in a reforger exercise in 1983. It has the 105mm gun, early turret stowage racks and is finished in overall forest green. The device fitted on the gun barrel is a pyrotechnic which simulates the gun firing during exercises. Overall forest green remained a common paint scheme. These are later M1A ones, also an exercise in Europe. However, the scheme I remember most is the MERDC scheme. This was a standardised paint scheme using patterns of four colours out of a palette of 12 colours. Two main colours covered 45% of the vehicle each, with the two minor colours covering 5% each. There were different colour combinations for different regions and seasons. This is a template for the Winter Verdant scheme using forest green, field drab, sand and black. It was a common scheme for Europe and probably the likely scheme for M1 Abrams tanks in Harold Coyle's book. The Team Yankee website has an article entitled Historical US Vehicle Colour Schemes in Team Yankee, which shows some other MERDC schemes as you can see here. Again, I'll put a link to this resource in the description. However, MERDC itself was phased out in 1984, although some units still fielded MERDC patterns into the late 1980s. It was replaced by a NATO 3 colour camouflage pattern in medium green, red, brown and black. This was adopted partly because the paint was specially formulated to resist chemical agents, and the scheme is sometimes known as CARC, Chemical Agent Resistant Coating. This scheme was the NATO standard scheme until the Gulf War, when vehicles arrived in NATO 3 colour and were repainted tan in theatre. So those are the colour options for the M1. Battlefront have a special American paint set for Team Yankee. When this is combined with the Quartermaster's paint set it gives you all the colours you need to paint your US forces. Let's look at using the Abrams in Team Yankee. This is the card for the M1 Abrams tank platoon. This card shows it's a tank unit with copper armour and thermal imaging. Copper armour is composite armour composed of ceramics, tungsten rods, Kevlar mesh and other advanced materials bonded together to give better armour protection than steel. It's particularly effective against heat projectiles, high explosive anti-tank. Working down the card we come to the stats for courage and skill including separate numbers for morale, remount, assault and counter-attack. Having all these platoon characteristics as separate numbers rather than the less granular flames of war skill and motivation gives some interesting options. In theory these six stat values could give some very specific flavour to units, allowing more variety than the simpler reluctant veteran or other pairings in flames. The Abrams platoon is hit on a 4 plus and is well protected with front armour 18, side armour 8 and top armour 2. Some players might note this is not a lot better than the T-72's front armour of 16, but keep in mind that these are the stats for the initial M1 Abrams. The M1A1 and later versions significantly increase the armour protection. The Cobham armour special rule means the side armour is 16 against heat weapons like anti-tank missiles and RPGs. Tactical move is 14 inches or 35 centimetres, while terrain dash is 18 inches or 45 centimetres, cross country dash is 28 inches or 70 centimetres, and road dash is 32 inches or 80 centimetres. This zippy performance is due to the powerful gas turbine engine, and makes the M1 significantly faster than the T72, but the German Leopard 2 is even faster. The M1 crosses terrain on a roll of 2 plus. Moving on to the weapons, the main gun is the 105mm M68 gun with a range of 40 inches or 100 centimetres, halted and moving rate of fire of 2, an anti-tank of 20 and a firepower of 2 plus. Interestingly this AT rating is lower than both the T-72's 125mm and the Leopard 2's 120mm guns, but is still man enough to do the job. The weapon has advanced stabiliser and laser rangefinder stats. The advanced stabiliser is what gives the Abrams the terrain dash speed of 14 inches, but the special rules specify machine guns can't shoot and the tank can't assault if it moves more than 10 inches. The laser rangefinder means the Abrams doesn't get a to hit penalty for targets over 16 inches or 40 centimetres. Thermal imaging is an advanced infrared sighting system which allows the Abrams to see targets at night or through smoke. The thermal imaging special rule allows the players to roll two dice for night visibility and choose the highest score. If the targets are visible this means the Abrams gets no to hit penalty for night or smoke. The M1 Abrams has a 50 calibre AA machine gun at the commander's position, 
a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun and a 7.62mm AA machine gun at the loader's position. These are good against infantry, for pinning down anti-tank missile teams and fending off pesky anti-tank helicopters. So that's the M1 Abrams tank platoon kit from Battlefront. It's a great product and builds up into a fantastic looking vehicle. Options for the M1 and the M1A1 make this versatile, although I'm still waiting for M1A1 stats to be released for Team Yankee. Painting these is a bit more complex than the mostly single colour schemes US players are familiar with from World War II, but Battlefront have provided a lot of sources and guides to help, as well as specialised paint sets. I guess I'd better get on with building the other vehicles from this box so I can give Team Yankee a go.